Marvin. Hey, Joe, Gigi, Naz, Marvin. Today, to be honest, was really good, but I ruined it. I'm still green, but I ruined it um, with this trade, with these trades. You see this? This here is like three hours. Three losers in a row, that messed up my psychology a little bit. I didn't revenge trade after that. I ended up green. But this was my worst trade. Like, I don't know, the worst one I've had in a really long time. I'm not sure the first one was bad. I think the first one was totally fine. Two big candles on the five minute chart, targeted view up would have been good. It was enough extended, enough parabolic, decent volume at the low of the day, new one minute high, tried it, failed, totally fine, shouldn't have revenge traded it one time and a second time there. I should have tried it second time somewhere around here. So this was fine loss, that was horrible there. Uh, the rest of my trades weren't that bad, we'll go through them after I finish reviewing yours. And how did you do today? Bad oil, sorry to hear so. One R. It's still green. Good job, Joe. Header done. JC, three R's up. That's good. Max loss. Better than over Max loss, Vlad. Good job. Good job, Abby. Gigi, nine hours. <laughs> Killing it. I think you had a better day than I had. Amazing. Then R today, Lou. Soon I'll step up and I'll let you do the trade review, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Gigi. All right, let's see what we had right here. JC, right? This is your trades. So you traded Oxy. This is amazing, and I love your entry. You, you are in a patient. I also traded Oxy. Uh, I caught it eventually at the beginning. I messed up a little bit with it, but I'll go with over my Oxy right after this one. So look at these guys. If you see this pullback here, this pullback here, it was a retest on the 60 minute chart. Let me get the epic pen. I'm not sure if you're seeing my cursor or not. So I'll bring the epic pen just in case. I don't know where it is. Oh my God, that's ugly actually. It's hiding somewhere. Please come here. Yeah, there it is. So on the 60 minute chart, there was a range around here. And you could see that by the pre-market price action. So what's happening around here is a breakout, a pullback to the retest area, and an ABCD pattern formation, where JC took it to the long set. This was an I, know, I would call this an A plus ABCD pattern. Amazing one, you took it to the long side. This is a nice ad. So this is the first leg, this is the second leg, leg where you are adding to your position. Now this I wouldn't have done. The last part you did was a little bit risky. Could anyone tell me why? Two reasons, maybe three actually. Not sure about the third. Okay, third leg, Geo, that's good. So this was the first leg, this is the second leg. You aim on ABCD patterns to trade the first and the second legs only because the third leg makes a huge pullback. ATR, Geo, that's good. I assume it made the ATR, but I'll need to check the daily chart for that right now. And finally, what happened here? A fake breakout, perfect. So you see, this is a perfect one. This is an amazing one in my opinion as well. Unfortunately, this didn't break out really well. And after the breakout, it immediately drops down. It could be a beginning of head and shoulder formation. Just avoid it after that. Unless it makes a bigger pullback, holds, and then continues going higher. So I like how you manage it overall. Let me share my ox trade with you. So this is how I traded it today. I saw this range on the 60 minute chart. And I told myself, I'm going to try this either to the long or either to the short side. My initial plan was to trade it to the long side. I think who called, maybe Peter called it or someone else. I think it's Peter. I'm not really sure to be honest, I forgot now. Um, anyway, I was looking at it to the long side and uh, it, it didn't give me a decent entry to the long side. At the open, it squeezed up and I missed my initial entry to the long side. And after the breakout, you could see we had a small fake breakout, 2040, 2040 after which we squeezed all the way back down to the low of the range. My mistake here, I didn't wait for the breakout. I went for the breakout, took it to the short side, added for a small reverse MCD pattern, and I stopped out. I think this wasn't ugly, especially with this five minute chart. 
but yeah, it was decent in my opinion. After that, we're squeezing up. I take my initial position to the long side, but I chased. Like this is an obvious chase. From the down all the way up, 40 or 50 cents move. This is a chase, and even if I chase it and I decide to enter right here, my stop loss should be somewhere in the middle of the next closest range I have. I didn't respect that, and I bailed on it for a small loser. Re-entered one more time, which finally worked out really well. My last partial, uh, 2090. So I like your entry. I wasn't here. If I was here and I was watching it, 100%, uh, I would have added here. But I just put my limit orders up there and left. Okay, so last entry when I entered, I put it around here. Why did I do that? Because we did an ABCD pattern. We bounced from the nine moving average in the five minute chart already. Right, you see this is the bounce here, bounce from the nine moving average in the five minute chart, and I'm going in for the breakout. So I had my stop loss be below, a little bit below this one minute candle. You're welcome. Now let's see what Cole did. So Cole traded plug. Now plug on the daily chart, I liked it so much. I didn't like it for one reason. Could anyone tell me? Just one reason. Why wouldn't I have traded plug to the long side? Oh, this was pre-market actually. Okay, now this is decent. Uh, honestly, I didn't trade plug because I saw this and I thought that this was a part of the pre-market. And I told you that if stock makes most of the move in the pre-market, I don't usually trade it after market open because what happens is usually a fake breakout and a sell off. That's why I didn't trade it. But I guess I didn't pay close attention to it. The pre-market, this was in the aftermarket. Pre-market was flat. This was a good actually stock to trade. Really good job. Cool. Now, your first position was, or your first entry was to the long side. I like it. Your stop loss was tight. If you're going for the bearish engulfing sandwich and you're entering for the breakout, what's the stop loss? Anyone? What's the stop loss on an engulfing sandwich, no matter what it is, if your entry is for the breakout? Exactly, Joe. That's it. The, somewhere in the middle should have been your stop loss, right? It, if it hit you by a penny to your middle of the range, it's totally fine. Uh, if you tighten it a little bit more than that, use the middle of the range just in case. Uh, and entry after the breakout, right? I like that you re-entered. That was nice. Really good partials with the good risk to reward. I saw that since your stop here was tight, I guess these were tight as well. So you definitely hit your risk to reward. Really nice partials all the way up there. Last exit right here. I would have taken a big partial here if you still had a lot of shares. Why? We are extended from the nine and the five. We're making a shooting star at the high of the day. There is a double top on the one minute chart. This is a good potential entry to the short side. And since I know that a lot of people will be getting in there to the short side, if I still have a lot of shares, I'll take most of my position out right there. If you had like 10% or 15%, not huge amount left, uh, you could hold it, hoping that it could get closer and bounce of view up. Below view up, definitely not, because below view up, the next target is the nine and the five. And the nine and the five is below your break even. You don't want to hold it all the way around there. Better re enter later, right? So good job. Yeah, you are 15%. So yeah, that's that's fine then. Vlad, let's see what you did. You traded Fubo. Now, for this one, we'll need to take a look at the bigger time frames, right? First. Fubo. And where you took it to the long side was 29.75. The average to range of this thing, the average to range of this thing is actually small, but lately it's been in play around here. And the average to range was around $4. Last few days, it was stuck in a range. And unless this stock breaks out of the range, I will not consider this average to range, which is the $4, right? I know it's $4, but it was $4. Look at this, if you just zoom it out, when did it start being in play, approximately? I know the numbers are small, but just approximately on the daily chart. When did this thing start getting in play? Sixty, seventy years. That's right. You see, and that that's you could see it here. The volume started getting twice as big or twice as big. And starting from here, it started getting an increase in an average range. Any day I'm trading it on here or here or even all the way to. Let me show you that. Where is my pen? I forget my cursor is not view 
is not there. So if you are trading it on any of those days, I would consider that the four dollar average true range because there is room for it to go either to the long side, either to the short side. It doesn't really matter. Now the normal average true range for this thing is sitting somewhere around one dollar when it's chopped or it's sitting in a range, and that's what's happening around here. It's stuck and sit, it's sitting in a range. I wouldn't go for uh, four dollars. Now it went all the way up, and this thirty dollar here is this. It bounced out of it. So you could assume that on the daily chart you are forming a reverse ABCD pattern. What's the favorable direction to on the daily chart right now? Overall, it's to the downside, right? It was really good, it was really strong, but look at this. After the breakout, it dropped all the way back down to the range and even inside it, which shows you that this thing is weak. It's coming back up and continuing lowers. Just looking at this part right here, I'm more favorable to the short side than um, to the long side. If you didn't pay attention to this right here and this right here, it's this. It's okay, I would say, um, because it wasn't the worst on the five-minute chart. But on the five-minute chart, look what you are having right there: bearish engulfing sandwich, a breakout, and then it's dropping back down. It is an ABCD pattern on the five, but look at the one as well: a double top, right, and it's just waving down. I wouldn't really be interested in this thing to the long side. And I'm not sure I would have been interested even if it broke the $30. Just looking at this move right here and how it looks like on the one minute chart, I doubt I would have traded it unless on the five minute chart it started settling down, like around an hour more consolidation or so. Stick to you, stick in the range, get the moving averages closer to it, um, calm down before the next uh, leg up. The short though was not bad. Because you had a double top, it broke down. This right here is also not a really decent chart, right? Though it did work out. Around here, it's decent because now you are starting to form a pennant. A pennant is a breakout pattern. We want this pennant to go with the direction of the daily chart, preferably, right? And it's breaking to the downside. The long side is still possible if we break around this area. If it waves up, waves up, it is possible above it. And then you could target that level. After that huge of a move, if the one minute chart is so ugly and so reversing, uh, don't try it for so long. So I don't tell you it's the worst setup because the setup was there, right? Let me get your trade again. Let's open it one more time. <clears throat> like the setup was there. Basically, it's here, right? It is an ABCD pattern. But we don't trade an ABCD pattern only because it looks like an ABCD pattern. Many factors should be included, right? uh and sometimes we see what we want to see right like right here you see a w shape because you want to take it to the long side while it's more clean of a double top and then it's waving down right and look at where where it bounced from again this year right not so bad but it wasn't so so clean i wouldn't tell you you shouldn't have taken this trade now let's take a look at here. Geo traded QS. So let's take a look at this one. QS, 60 minute chart. 60 minute chart, a little bit choppy to be honest. Um, it is not a range, right? It's going up all the way up there, squeezing back down. It's one week, which is fine. I'm always telling you there is only one week and you're going against it. It's, uh, it's not bad, you could try that. Now let's take a look at the five minute chart. Dropping down, pulling back, dropping down, pulling back. Again, nothing so clear. I would like it definitely above this area. If we break around here or break and pull back for a continuation, I would have definitely liked it. I could draw a range in the five minute chart, a range which is so big and ugly, but there it is, right? This is the middle of the range where it's holding. So for me, a long would have been somewhere above the middle of the range. The one minute chart, there is a fake breakdown. I see that. Good thing to notice. Coming back up, dropping down higher low on the one minute chart, and you are taken to the long side. Not bad. I like that. It wasn't ideal on the five, unfortunately, but it's not bad around here. Now, what did you do after that? You took it to the short side. The short I like. The short also is really decent because you're breaking one more time, right? There is the blue line, you drew it, and you broke it, pulled back with a lower high right there, took it to the short side. Stop loss, to be honest, I would have used this. 
I wouldn't have used somewhere up there. It's clearly bouncing out of here, which is a lower high. And there it is, the 69. You see on the five-minute chart, it's the 69. You don't need to put your stop loss somewhere at the 70, which is up there. You're getting a lot of risk to reward back. With this stop loss, you could have got the two R's and more somewhere down there. Now, another thing is I wouldn't have held it to my original stop loss in this case. Why is that? Because this is another fake breakdown. If you draw a descending triangle, if you draw a range, whatever you draw right here, it's breaking down. After the breakdown, we would want to see a retest and a continuation. What happens around here is a breakdown, increasing volume at the low of the day, bouncing around the daily level, closing as a hammer on the five minute chart and making a new five minute high. Looking at this, I would assume that it could easily go at least all the way up here and there is no reason for you to hold it to your max loss. The first trade was decent. Again, it wasn't the cleanest, right? Because it wasn't a range. We want to trade breakouts on ranges, but uh, it's not bad. The second one was really good. Stop loss was really wide and you exited uh, a little bit late on it. Gigi, how did you trade? So Gigi trade, now this is good. This is I like definitely. And I also watched this one, but I messed it up a little bit. The 60 is so clean on this one. Hammer on the previous scandal. And if it breaks out, most likely it will run up. There was a fake breakout around here, which I didn't like. But again, as I told you, if it's only one week, you could go against it, right? Multiple ones or double, triple weeks, you just avoid them. Now, after the breakout, it goes all the way back down, not making a new low in the range. You see this low right here where it went to was the middle of the range on the 60, coming back up, forming an ABCD pattern on the one minute chart. You took it to the long term on a new five minute high, added on a new five minute high, good partials. This ad, just in my opinion, was a little bit risky and scary. It's not bad because it's above the retest area. It is above the retest area, but I don't like the pullback because it wasn't just a drop and the continuation, it happened in two legs on the wave down. Other than that, it's fine. This right here would have been an ideal ad. Why is that? There is a pattern, ascending triangle on the one minute chart and ascending triangle on the one minute chart for a break. Now this right here was also a little bit risky. Why is that? Double top, already did the average through range as far as I could see down here. And this was a huge drop all the way back down, right? You could consider this as a retest, but only a retest is not enough, right? This right here is a retest. If you add on this one, on this one, I tell you it's fine. It's going up, it's retesting, and then it's continuing. But on a pattern like this right here, it's not a retest anymore. It just started to form uh, a reversal pattern. And uh, this right here is a place where a lot of shorts are taking their partials at, which would cause it to bounce a little bit before the real breakout, if it happens. Let me show you how I mistreated this one because let me open it, LI. I also have been watching LI and I also was watching it to the long side. I established my position in the pre-market to the long side and my stop loss, I don't know why I had my stop loss around here. I should have had it somewhere below there. I guess I was a little bit greedy. So I tightened it a little bit more and because of that, it so it, it, this was bad in my opinion. I didn't trade it really well. Uh, stop loss, should, I, I could see clearly that the bounce of the 50 moving average, right? multiple times and I have my stop loss a little bit above it should have used my put my stop loss a little bit below it because this is an average here it was mental it wasn't hard I saw it dropping down and I just hit my hotkey and build on it I shouldn't have done that yeah this was really bad the 60 I agree with you the 60 was so clear on this one right and that what made me took it a little bit earlier I was really sure about it, but hold on it. Hotkey, I use hotkey, Ashman. I will, let's see how you traded.
uh, hot keys. Uh, I don't use the buttons which are on the montage. Okay. And I have a few days ago. Wow. Now that's a lot of orders right there. So let's take a look at this thing right here. So I guess you were really long bias on it, right? But what made you long bias there? Testing algorithms, that's a geo. <laughs> so yeah, that was really heavily in. I could see why you did that. I also like it when we break down, when we break down, right? And then squeeze back up, closing as a hammer, new one minute high, scaled up multiple times. Unfortunately, it didn't work for you. And now, the, look, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want just an opinion. You don't want to scale in within a range. When it's sitting like this or chopping around, you could expect it to do that for a longer time, right? You got some out, out here. Uh, but uh, it could have broke out, it could have continued this for like five, six, seven more minutes. If you are getting in within the chop, get one or two entries only, maybe your full size only. At the breakout, you could do whatever you did right here. So this I wouldn't tell you about, this is decent because at least finally it's breaking out. Multiple entries, partial entries, partial entry, partial. Now this is definitely not my style, but if it's working for you, it's fine. Because it was just going up, I don't love adding on the way up better get in heavily one time at the bottom with a tighter stop loss and partial heavily on the way up uh, because these ads right here they ruin your average every time if this is your strategy to lock in some profits and add more so that if it goes against you you don't lose a lot you just lose your uh, realized profits it's fine you could continue working on it maybe you'll adjust it a little bit more but if not one huge entry Partial, all the way up. Yeah, see, you're playing like the small range in the one. And if not holding for a trend, it could definitely work out. Though, I would just uh, recommend avoiding um, entering heavily in a range. Like this one right here is, is fine. You didn't know anything, right? You didn't know that it will be stuck in this range. It was a breakout where you took it to the long side and multiple entries got so bad, that's okay. This right here wasn't really necessary. This right here was decent. Good job, Abby. My one minute chart doesn't show entries. Okay, it's fine. Uh, Let's, as I, I could see that you entered around 10.50. Oh, your entry is back then. It's fine, let's take a look at this one. So the 16 chart on Riot, I, I've been watching Riot as well. I missed it actually. Not missed it, I think at the open it was choppy, wasn't it, right? Yeah, at the open it didn't break out. I was looking at Riot for a breakout today to the long side. What happened at the open is a drop, which is why I just stopped uh, watching Riot and I didn't trade it. Um, later though, look what happens. The favorite pattern, right? Where it makes a fake breakdown, fake breakdown, and then squeezes all the way back to the highs, to the highs. So if you take it to the long in this play, at this place, it would be good. Stop loss in the middle, right? And then you could add or enter if you didn't enter right here. Now, what do we have? We have a range, a breakout. There was no retest. There was immediately a, a trend. You could consider this the first leg up, this the second leg up right here. Nice entry, but really small partials. What was your reason to get out that early? Because the, the setup was really good. You entered at the breakout. Stop should have been somewhere in the middle since the breakout. Okay, I see that. The average trade range was really cheap. But one thing, remember, when did we say that it's okay to trade past the average trade range? There is one exception, exactly Geo. And this is all time high, right? If the stock is at all time high, it could run usually way more than it is on a normal day. Like here, right? When it's breaking out to all time highs, like here. If you are breaking all time highs and you're having CT patterns all time highs, those are my favorites. It could run, hold a small position for a bigger move.
I'm in Bitcoin and I'm still holding it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trading cryptos on Saturdays and Sundays because markets are closed. The patterns are similar and I do that for fun there. So uh, let's see what you did. Plug on the 60, okay, we did discuss this one, similar one, right? Arrange on the 60 minute chart. At the open, let's take a look at that. You got stopped out immediately, right? Let me zoom it into the one minute chart. Yeah, I don't read the order flow anyway. I trade only patterns, whether it's stocks or cryptos, which is why it's uh, easier for me. So you took it to the long side. Was it a little bit late, right? Did you chase it here? Because look at this, the entry was a little bit late, right? That's around 40 cents. Okay, pull back before you enter. That's fine then. So you're taking it to the long side. After taking it to the long side, the stop loss still needs to be somewhere within the middle of the range, right? Unfortunately, it got you some I guess you get some to the penny, right? Now look at this here. This is a huge drop, like huge drop. And I personally wouldn't have taken it to the long side around here. This is a retest and I agree with you. I said that on ABCD patterns, you could take it to the D after a parabolic pullback if it is sitting at the retest, but I don't think this is decent enough. It just eliminated the whole move to the long side. If it started somewhere down here, it went up and then it dropped down to the retest and started forming an ABCD pattern. I might try it, but this just eliminated the whole move, right? It's going up, making a double top, dropping all the way down. I personally wouldn't have tried it to the long side. One other thing which I noticed, your stop losses are really tight, right? It's going in your favor, you're exiting at break even, you're re-entering, you're exiting at break even. Though if you use at least, at least a new one minute low, this would have been a two hour for, uh, trade for you. Remember what we said, never put your stop loss within the candle. The tightest stop loss you could have is uh, a new one minute low. Why is that? Because the stock could open, break out, go all the way down, not make a new low, and then squeeze back up. And it could do this multiple times, right? And the trend will look something like this, which is ugly. You don't want to enter at the breakout, exit down here. Enter at the breakout, exit here, enter at the breakout, and exit right here, which is pretty much what happened right there. Should it have been two losers right here. Then you're finally entering at the breakout, and again, you're exiting at break even, though it could have simply held this area, which it did for a few times, and then continued uh, the move. Tightest stop loss, let it be the new one minute low, if you want to go for the uh, tight stops. Non playbook moves. Okay, I see that. So you get frustrated a little bit or angry. This is my tip for you for the future. Uh, I used to do this, and I'll be honest with you, this helped me a lot, and it, it improved my trading so much. It decreased my losing uh, trades also so much. If I feel that I'm frustrated or angry, I just shut down uh, Dust Trader. And trust me, this is not easy. This is the most difficult part because we are addicted to trading. Most of us here, we are addicted to trading. We know that uh, market is uh, unlimited supply for money, right? You could just make a new trade, one good trade, and make all the money back, but you will not be able to do that if you're angry. And the hardest part is to press that X button on the top right there. Exactly, Brian. That's actually a really good note. Don't sit in the chat room. If you'll be thinking about trading and getting your money back, uh, you won't. You'll just lose even more. Once you feel that you're angry or frustrated or you're giving some money back to the markets and or you feel that you want to make that money back, just close this, watch a movie, talk to a friend, I don't know, do some laundries, anything. Uh, until you feel so calm as if the market just opened and you didn't have any losers, right? Once you feel that you're totally calm, you don't, don't care how much you lost and you are starting fresh, open the charts again and look for a new opportunity. If you take a walk for one hour, timing it in your alarm, I'll get back after one hour 
and you're waiting for this one hour to finally end and then you tell yourself okay an hour has passed now i'm going back to trading yeah this is not the right way to do it just don't do it because you're still frustrated and you're still having that mentality that you need to make that money back take a break take a walk outside yeah <laughs> lift some weights Michael, let's see what you did. Yes, Ben, feel free to ask. So Michael traded also plug. Plug, a lot of you here traded plug, right? Let's take a look at the five. Um, not the cleanest five, to be honest. And not the cleanest 15, right? At the end of the day, we're having a shooting star or a doji sitting around the resistance area. Holding that resistance area. Oh, this was short. It wasn't too long. Okay, for short, it's not that bad, but still not that good as well. It's not ready from extreme reversal. Why is that? We don't trade extreme reversals on stocks which gapped up or which are strong on the daily chart. Those stocks we don't try to catch an extreme reversal on because it's highly unlikely that they will go to view up and below. This time it did, but most of the time they won't. You don't want to try to force and catch a reversal. I'm glad that one time it failed, the second time it worked out really well, and it gave you a really good reversal. The 15 looked really good right here, but still based on the rule, I'm using stocks at all-time high or stocks which are uptrending. Don't take a reversal on them. I would uh, avoid it. Looks like it worked out really well for you, which is good. Uh, do some statistics for your reversal trades. If you're trading uh, reversals, Maybe you'll make exceptions. When can you trade uh, a reversal on a stock which is all time high or a stock which is strong on the daily chart? I didn't go in too deep into that, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't touch short on this one, Michael. Spend, you could do that, but uh, don't develop a habit of over trading. I used to tell myself the same thing. Okay, it's simulator, uh, it's a learning time and it's practice time. I could just take as many trades as I want. I will trade a lot. And once I go live, I will uh, control my trades. When I went live, I was over trading because I developed this bad habit. Maybe for a month, two months maximum, do that. More than that, just don't. First, two, uh, or two, first one or two months, you could do that. Then I'll take a look at PLTR. We don't have main trades left. I'll go through them and I'll take a look at PLTR immediately. So B tank, let's see what you did. Okay, so you're having a lot of charts. I like that. <laughs> Not bad. Let's go. Okay, Emu, we've been watching Emu today. I also uh, have been watching Emu. And I like Emu because you had the range, right? And if you break up, we could, I could have traded it to the long side. I missed the entry in the pre-market or right here. I would have been stopped out. I wanted to enter right here. It, it popped up all the way up there. And I told myself my stop will be a little bit too wide for me, like 40 cents. I avoided it. And I would have lost right there. Should have re-entered right there, but uh, I didn't. Where is the one, actually? I need the one. The one was more clean. There it is. There it is where I wanted to enter. Once we did the bearish engulfing, uh, the bullish engulfing crack, it popped up all the way to 78, uh, 80. And I told myself that having stop loss somewhere inside here is not really good. It's like so wide. I still would have been so bad right there. This was a good re-entry on this setup for the break, right? 77. And if you take a look at the 60, 77 was where it broke from. Now, this is where I wouldn't have taken it. Why is that? Look at this, this is a healthy trend around here. Going up, pulling back, right? Going up, pulling back, going up. And now this is the beginning of head and shoulders. And this is the neckline. So this was not ideal entry to the long side. You need to make sure that the head and shoulders pattern actually failed for starters. And if you enter around here, I tell you it's fine. But let's take a look how it looks like on the five inch chart, 750, is it good there? Yeah, on the five, it's also good, you see, 7750 you will have a bearish engulfing sandwich on the five minute chart, which coincides with that pattern which failed on the one minute chart. From Tuesday, right? Yeah, today it also was, did something because I traded it, I remember, and it was also a range. Let's take a look at it today. 
I made a battery on MU. There it is. Okay, I, I even chased it. So look at this. Uh, there it is, broken the pre market, went up, dropped down, came back up, and I wanted to enter somewhere around here in the middle, somewhere around here in the middle for the break. And I guess I missed it, or I was watching something else or trading something else, which was unfortunate. Once we broke the high, even later, this was literally chase. Like, there is no excuse. That was horrible, actually. Yeah, this was horrible. This was the good entry. And this setup, you see 78.50, 78.50, right after we're breaking this sending triangle on this skin chart, this was the entry. There is one week against us, it's fine. Like we said, if you go against one week, it's fine. More than one week, it's bad. Uh, try to scalp it maybe, or I don't know whatever I want to do, but this wasn't good. This is horrible. It did work out later though, around here. I guess I need to sit more behind my screens because there are some good opportunities on, on the market trending. Okay, twin traders, let's see what you did. AMD. So one thing I noticed, and I would recommend you also uh, pay attention to that, you usually try to catch the first uh, signal for the move. Once you believe that it is going to go in your favor, you just hit the trigger. Um, be patient, especially later after 10 o'clock. Setups will not work only in one five minute candle or only 10 or in 10 minutes. They will take longer to work. And even if, if they start working like this, look at this. If you miss this entry right here and miss this entry right here and miss this entry right here, you could still enter here, right? After 20 minutes. After 10 o'clock, they don't just shoot and go without you. Uh, let it do whatever it does. If it breaks here, it, it will do small pullback, one minute or something like that. And even if you enter a little bit later, it still wouldn't be that bad because it's set up based on the five-minute chart. Don't force it earlier, right? Now, the next thing, if you want to take it to the long ground here, you see that it's still far from the nine and the five. There was no pullback. Right here, it's going up and there is no pullback. There is consolidation. We want to see at least 30% pullback. If you want to force it to the long side, you need to have your stop loss a little bit below the nine and the five in case it pulls back, which it did. This is ideal and I like it. Why is that? Because now you have a decent pullback, right? You'll have a move around here or a move around here and you'll have a decent pullback, which is around 40% or 30, right? Which we like for ABCD patterns. Holding the nine moving average in the five minute chart, making a new high, you could take it to the long around here or at the breakout. The arrow is also amazing. Now you're breaking the high of the range. You're adding to your position and writing it up. Another thing to work on is partials. No need to have these early partials. Stop loss around here. I don't think it was really good. A little bit lower, just to be safe. And hold on to your winners. But really good job. I like how you entered. Two stabs is really good. Not always only when a new five minute high forms. If I see that there, is, there are enough signals on the one minute chart, like let's say that on the five it's holding the nine, like hugging the nine. And on the one minute chart, it coincides with the 50 moving average. On the one minute chart, it bouncing multiple times of the one minute chart, closing as hammers or dojis or any of the uh, confirmation candles I made in the webinar. If the five is like this, but it's all, it's doing this somewhere down here, I take it before the new five minute high. Spend, I'll try to cover that by the end of the trade review. The best areas to add is the, are the breakouts. If you manage to enter as close as possible to the seam, like you did around here, for example, it's not as close as possible to the seam, but it's still within the range. The best place to add is the breakout, like you did. Uh, Michael, not yet. I'll do one on breakouts on January. I don't think I'll do one on ranges really soon because I'm still studying ranges. And it's a little bit complicated because there is a range within a range within a range. I want to cover it all really uh, um, from all aspects before I make a webinar on it so that it doesn't sound confusing. So I don't think I'll do anything about ranges anytime soon. 
It will be unknown breakouts. With trading them live, I can notice them and I can trade them real time, but uh, I can't explain them yet really well. And honestly, that's because I didn't do any research on them yet. I didn't put in statistics, I didn't back test them. It's how I combine them with breakouts. So let's take a look at this one. This is a good chart, I like it. Stock made a huge move. There is a reversal candle on the five and not the one, and there is a new five minute low. The entry is a little bit late, better entry tighter, right? On parabolic reversals, you want your entries as close as possible. Uh, to the resistance to get really good moves on them or really good risk to reward on them. This is a really early partial in my opinion, but then it was fine. View up and the nine and the five. I wouldn't have added here, you are adding on higher highs and higher lows. A new low would have been good, just to be safer on it. You are most welcome. Now this long is good, I would have entered around here. Why is that? Look at this. So you were forming lower lows and lower highs. Actually, only lower highs, higher lows. Now look what's happening around here. We're forming a higher high, we're forming a higher low. It's pulling back to the nine and the five. Now this is an ABCD pattern on a stock which is at all time high. And this is a good entry. This right here is a good entry for the breakout. This is still not bad, in my opinion. This would have been better. Good partial. I like that you didn't exit. You knew that this is a retest area or this place is the middle, so there is no reason to partial. Added multiple times, which is still not bad. Some early partials, especially those two. The rest of the break even is fine. Short. Okay, um, if this wasn't a stock at all time high, I would take it. But because it's all time high, I don't really like it. Why would I like to the short side no, on normal days? Because there is a fake breakout. We are breaking out. We don't make any move after the breakout. And then we're getting down all the way inside the range where we took it to the short side. We did review a trend like this, and I said it, I don't like it because it's all time high. Uh, other than that, it was a good setup. Then, let's check your trade. So, Dell traded LI. I like that. You are patient. You are more patient than me on this one. I even like your entry here. So, we did break out on LI. There is the range. We did break out. After the breakout, what happens? A pullback. Not exactly to the retest, but close enough, right? It's not always going all the way to the retest. Sometimes it's below it, sometimes into it, sometimes it's a little bit above it. Forming an ABCD pattern right here. We took it to the long side. One thing which I would have done, <coughs> definitely not existing here. This is the first thing. Uh, the next thing, uh, an add or a re-entry up here at the break. But I like how you enter into this trade. Of course, you would have managed it a little bit better. That's still a good one. Let me show you some of my trades from today. CGC traded this thing to the short side. Why is that? The daily chart, I didn't like how this one closed on the daily. It's not bullish at all. It's more weak on the daily. Went all the way up and got sold all the way back down. Today, in the pre-market, same thing. It's gapping up, but the pre-market doesn't show me any strength. It's just dropping down. Don't install now. Now, what's happening in the pre-market, dropping down, reverse ABCD, took it to the short side, stop loss somewhere around here, around here, the high, the last level it bounced from, double partials because we struggled at the low of the day, exited the rest at break even. Right, I didn't trade it, Ebon, I didn't trade it, though it was on my watch list as well. Really good one. Oxy, Oxy. Oxy, I did review it, so no need to go through it now. Facebook, FCL. QS, why did I put QS on my watch list? I don't know. BTBT. So BTBT was also a nice one. You could see that on the daily chart, we were sitting in a range. If we were sitting in a range, I could expect that this here and this here could happen today as well. They could happen even tomorrow because we're still within a range, unless we break out, right? Uh, and in the pre-market, we're at 27.80, which is here in the middle. We could expect it to run up and we could expect it to run to the downside. Daily chart telling me we could run both directions. 60 minute chart will have range. And I would trade it to any direction it breaks out to. Right? At the open, what happens? Hammer, 
So breaking down, coming back up, taking it to the long side, putting my stop loss somewhere down here, really tight, which is really bad. And those partials, to be honest, I didn't intend to partial around here. The spread was big on this one. The price was sitting around here. I hit the hot key for partial. It got me filled somewhere down here because of the spread. So this partial was really horrible. Should have paid more attention to the level two. Starting from here, I think they were uh, decent. Exit the rest at break even. Look what's happening after that. My favorite breakout pattern, and I mentioned it a lot. If it breaks out to one direction, then squeezes back, goes all the way down, and squeezes back to the low of the range, I like it to the short. And that's the did on it. Where is it? Back. Took it to the short side here. Now, before, I would put my stop loss here. This is the old me. And I think still a lot are doing this. But I notice there is always a shakeout. If it's so clean, even with multiple hammers down here, there is always a shakeout. I don't put my stop loss at the high. I expect it to wick up and drop down. So I use the next closest technical stop loss I have, which is the moving average around here and the 50 moving average on the one minute chart. Was almost about to get subbed out. It dropped down in my favor. Now we're breaking the 27. We're breaking the low of the range. I'm adding to my position, moving my stop loss somewhere into the middle. Partial all the way down. Uh, I left a little bit more for a bigger run, but it just went to my break even, a little bit above break even, which is fine. XL, let's take a look what we had right there. I didn't read this one. WKHS. WKHS was a really nice runner. LAC, I had this one, but I didn't trade it as well. NIO, FUBO, LI, LI we discussed. NKLA, X, GHIV, Tesla. Oh, this, I'm so mad I missed this one. Like this one was the favorite. When it breaks down and then squeezes all the way back up to 781. Look at this, the squeeze around here. It would have been actually even a good five minute open range breakout. Missed it, nothing I could do. So those were the trades I did today. There was a question about how I built my watch list. Uh, my watch list is really simple. It's not that difficult and not that complicated to build. Uh, all I do is uh, I type the names of all the stocks I had on the web breakout webinar. I mentioned them uh, here in the market viewer. I add all the gappers list to the market viewer. And I add all the NASDAQ gainers, NASDAQ losers, NASDAQ gainers, and NASDAQ losers to the market viewer. I'll have somewhere around 70 stocks. At that, by that time, if not more. And then I just do this. Okay. Go through NASDAQ gainers and NASDAQ losers, NASDAQ gainers, NASDAQ losers, type them all in the market viewer. There are also 25 stocks. I mentioned in um, how to trade momentum webinar. Add them also in the market viewer. And your trade ideas scanner, the gappers, the gappers list, uh, so to the upside and downside, also add them to the market viewer. There will be around 70 stocks right here, sometimes even more, sometimes less, depending on how many stocks you have throughout the day. Uh, what I do after that is I go through them one by one. For example, CGC, I see a range, I see a good daily chart, I'll keep it, right. I see a range, I see a, daily, uh, a good daily chart for the breakout, I'll keep it. E1, I see a good range right here, <clears throat> it was around here around this area. And if we break out, we could run to the upper side. Good daily chart, I'll keep it. Oxy, same thing. Good range right here. Good daily chart, I'll keep it. Facebook, good range right here. Daily chart is not ideal. I don't know why I kept it. I have no idea why I kept it, but it's still not bad. There is a pennant, even not that. Maybe just for a backup in case I don't have anything. No, Brian, I don't care about pre-market volume. No matter how ugly it looks like, even if it's like this, I don't care about it. Volume will come. Market open, volume will come. So I don't care about how much volume it has in the pre-market. If there is a big pattern on the bigger chart, in the bigger time frame, that's all I care about. And I look for a continuation for that bigger time frame. And uh, one of the main reasons we'll look for that. Okay, let's do that. What's the main reason we look for uh, volume in the pre-market? Answer this question. You know that. You read the book, right? So let's discuss that. And I'll just give you my opinion. Geo, that's it. Uh, we want to see that a lot of traders are interested in this stock and they are watching this stock, right? Let's say you're having 
a huge volume in the pre-market, but it's not really good on the 60, it's not really good in the daily, um, it's not really good, I don't know, it made most of the move in the pre-market, you have volume in the pre-market, You it is in play, a lot of traders are trading it, but what are you going to trade? You have the volume, are you going to trade a breakout, a breakdown, an ABCD, a reversal? There is no idea, I don't have any idea about that. I have volume, but it's not enough for me, I want to have a pattern, right? Um, now, the main reason also is when you have a lot of day traders, it means that not only algos will be trading it. For me personally, I don't care if algos are trading it or traders are trading it. Anyway, 18%, 80% of the market volume will be algos, whether you want it or not. It's high frequency trading. A, a day trader or a, a swing trader, they'll get one position in, they'll hold it for a few minutes and then they're partial. This whole price action around here is high frequency trading. It's 80%, right? If I have huge volume in the pre-market or a good pattern on the 60 minute chart, I'll go for the pattern on the 60 minute chart because I'm totally fine trading with algos if those algos will push the price into my direction. It's just my theory and how I look into it. So pre-market volume isn't really necessary for me and it seems to work for me. Now, let's take a look at the rest of my watches right here. Same thing around here. This wasn't really clean because we have double wicks in the pre-market, but I kept it in case we don't have anything else. BTBT mentioned why I watched this one. XL, there is a kind of a range around here. ABCD pattern in the daily chart expected a long on it. The long happened, but it didn't happen at the open. Same thing with WKHS, amazing ascending triangle, right? Look at this, this is eight o'clock. Amazing ascending triangle, amazing daily chart. Keep it, right? LAC, good range on the 60 good daily chart look at this those stocks they are moving clean right now nio wasn't that clean unfortunately but the daily chart wasn't also good it was within right kept it because it's always in play um fubo daily chart wasn't really good but the 60 was ready for a breakout this is nine o'clock right this is the eight o'clock this is nine o'clock expected a breakout on it breakout happened which was really good li same thing nkla same thing and look at this those stocks they trend i like that about them this one, I wanted to trade it <clears throat> to the long side. What happened in it is a fake breakout, and we love fake breakouts, right? Then a downtrend. Would I have traded it? Not really, because the daily is so strong. This stock, uh, I don't have to trade it, if I, even if I was watching. GHIF, I wanted to trade it to the short side. Why is that? This was the range right there. This is the market open, by the way. And the daily chart was slightly going down, and I told myself, if we are breaking down, I would take it to the short side, all the way down to this level. And that happened. So that will supposed to be a scalp trade which i didn't trade tesla same thing good daily good 60 UONE. why did i keep you on a this is eight o'clock here there was a range around here and yeah this is actually ugly on the daily maybe I didn't keep attention pay attention to it but yeah i want to trade this one for a breakdown basically this is the way i build my watch list Uh, Bitcoin, they are uploaded. Uh, I uploaded the last review to YouTube. This one, I hope I will upload it. It's just that now I use the room recording and sometimes uh, it crashes and uh, I can't find the recording, so I don't upload it. Hopefully this will be uploaded. The previous one is already uploaded. Yeah, Joan, they are recorded. Hopefully this one will also be uploaded in like 10 minutes. So that's it, guys. Thank you for sharing your trades. Winners and losers, we don't care about that. We learn from each other. I shared with you. Oh, actually, Baba, I didn't share with you that one. It, did, it wasn't on my watch list. Someone called it. I didn't add it here, but look at this. This was also good, right? Range, good daily chart to the downside, and I wanted to play it to the short. I missed it, got some FOMO, and I started trying to catch a parabolic reversal on it. Three losers in a row. Minus three hours. So this was my worst trade from today, and I posted it on Twitter as well. Just so that you see that we all mess up. It's not only you that are, that have sometimes these type of days. All right, so you're welcome all. Have a good day, and um, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, because it works sometimes, Gia. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.